whether it's apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic, speculative future or dystopian novels, we just can't seem to get enough. None of these genres are new. They've existed for decades, if not centuries. Humans seem perpetually fascinated by their future and particularly the destructive possibilities in it. But I'm sure a lot of you, like me, feel as though the dystopian and speculative future genre has had a bit of a resurgence or burst of popularity in the past year or so. Despite originally coming out in the 1990s, The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood has been all over the bestsellers list, and the TV adaptation has been incredibly popular amongst viewers. The 2017 Bailey's Women's Prize for Fiction was won by a dystopian novel called The Power by Naomi Alderman. And from my perspective here on Book Break, one of our most popular videos this year has been our dystopian recommendations video. And the need to consume speculative, apocalyptic, dystopian novels does not seem to be waning. The consensus seems to be that dystopian and speculative future novels become popular in times of political and social upheaval in the world. Creative authors manage to look at the problems that surround us in the modern world and speculate the way in which these might develop over time. But I don't think our fascination with dystopia comes from a simple macabre hopelessness about our future. I think we consume all of this fiction because we actually care. We speculate on the future because we want to make the best future possible. So this popularity gives me hope at least that we are not just engaging with fiction but engaging with the world around us. And one of the latest speculative future releases that I've been enjoying is American War by Omar El Akkad. This novel is set during the Second American Civil War which breaks out in 2074. With a background in journalism, Omar El Akkad is inspired by contemporary issues to explore a potential future. And with my fascination with this genre as much as yours, I had to seize the opportunity when this author was in the office to have a little chat with him. So without further ado, let's hear from the author. You have a background in sort of journalism and correspondence, don't you? So I was wondering, given that you've written this book set in what a lot of people were describing like a dystopian world, if you felt there was a role of dystopian literature to play within society other than just entertainment? I have a strange relationship with the word dystopian. Um, I mean, some of my favorite novels are, are, are classified as dystopian, yeah. certainly The Handmaid's Tale and, and, and uh, 1984, yeah. uh, all far better books than anything I'll ever write in my life, but, but, but also have that label of dystopian. Um, but in some cases it feels like a cop-out label, mm -hmm. in the sense that if you describe something as dystopian, there's an implied distance, mm. like, oh, it's, yeah. this is fictional, this isn't really going to happen, this is worse than the worst case scenario. But most dystopian fiction to me is concerned with the present, it's not mm. concerned with some far away terrible future, it's concerned with an extrapolation of what we're doing right now. Um, so that was the sense of, of, that was what was going through my head when I was writing American War, was this idea of a grotesque extrapolation of things that either have happened or are currently happening. Was there sort of one thing going on at a specific period of time which made you feel as if I need to write this book. <laughs> there are a number of things. I mean, on the climate change aspect, um, one of the key moments was when I was down writing a story in southern Louisiana. Um, for people who haven't gone, southern Louisiana is one of the most beautiful places on okay. earth. Just gorgeous, gorgeous geography. Um, it also loses the equivalent of about a football field of land every hour. Wow. Um, one of the worst climate change disasters in North America very rarely gets talked about. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, most people like tell that too, that. and that's the reaction I get. It's just like, are you sure? Are those numbers right? And I have to go double check them every yeah. now and then because it sounds ridiculous. Um, but it's a combination of rising sea levels, climate change, mm. uh, miles and miles of oil pipelines uh, that cut up the root systems, cut up the land. Uh, the river is levied in place, and so it doesn't get to deposit sediment anywhere. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get to replenish the land. And it was, I had started American War, and I had plotted, I'd run through the plot in my mind. Um, but I didn't know where it was going to start. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the setting of the beginning of the book until I went down to southern Louisiana to write that story. And as soon as I landed, I thought, okay, this is, this yeah. is it. This has to be. The, the inspiration for the rest of the book has to do with this idea of turnabout, of, of taking these things that have happened all the way over there uh, and recasting them as things that are happening mm -hmm. over here. Yeah. Know, that's the central trick. It's not particularly clever, um, but it's, it's the, the underpinning of the entire book is, is on this idea of turnabout. And, and that comes across in the book, it feels very visceral and when I'm reading it I feel like you are predicting the future. It feels, it feels very believable, I think, what you've written. 
Yeah, that's terrifying. <laughs> that's the weird thing is that when you write a book and all the dials are turned up to 11, yeah. you think, okay, certainly this isn't gonna... And then, and then you get into a situation where the book comes out and, and I never expected it to be received in the sense of its, um, its likelihood. Yeah. You know, that was never a criteria that I thought yeah. this book would be judged on. Um, so that's been very strange and somewhat, um, somewhat scary. Well, how do you think your background in um, obviously writing was more non-fiction um, has kind of influenced you as a fiction author? Fiction was always my first love. It's the first okay. thing I ever started writing back when I was a kid, and it's the world in which I felt most comfortable. Um, and that has to do with the idea of being unrooted. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I was born in one place, I grew up in another place, I'm a citizen of a third country, and now I live in a fourth country. So the question, where are you from, I don't have a satisfactory answer to that. And so when you have that kind of unrooted sense, fiction is a very safe place. Mm -hmm. You get to define the contours yeah. of your own world, you get to create it, so on and so forth. I, I joined, I, I got into journalism just before things went really bad. Mm -hmm. So I got in when it was still, it wasn't hemorrhaging money yeah. or anything like that. Um, and, it, and I learned a lot from it. I learned a lot. But, but journalism is, is by definition concerned with answers. Yes. You know, who, what, where, when, uh, so on. Um, which is fine and it's, and it's necessary. Um, but I also have questions. Mm -hmm. And fiction for me is where you go to explore questions. There are no answers in my novel, but yeah. it's a place where you can explore questions. Yeah, and then, and then engage in a conversation with your readers almost. So has the reaction to the book um, been anything like what you expected it would be? Well, I never thought the book would be published. I mean, I was writing it in 20, 2014, 2015. I, was, I had a day job. I had no agent. I had no yes. publisher. I had no expectation it would ever see the light of day. Um, and so to be in this situation now, to have it out in the world and be fortunate enough to get emails from readers. Yeah. Around, I got an email from Manchester the other day, and, and that's a very strange sentence yeah. for me to say, living out in Portland, Oregon, that somebody had, you know, had read the book and, and had thought enough of it to send me this letter, you know, mm. explaining how they felt about it. Um, there's been all kinds of, and one of the weird things has been that um, it comes out in the age of Trump, and mm -hmm. it comes out in this age of immense political polarization, even by American standards. Yeah. Um, and so it's, right now it's seen in that light. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, some of the criticism I get seems to um, presuppose that I wrote this book on November 9th. Yeah. You know, that I, that sort of, <laughs> but it is very much seen in its time, and I'm looking forward to a day when we're on the other side of whatever yeah. it is we're going through right now, yeah. and it's seen in a different light. Uh, well, I thought perhaps just to polish things off, uh, I w was wondering if you had any recommendations for books that maybe fall into the dystopian category, or speculative futures, or books that you love and would also love other people to read. Um, my neighbor uh, in Oregon, Lydia Yukonovich, mm -hmm. just finished the Book of Joan, okay. um, which is unlike any other sort of science fiction uh, speculative fiction yeah. book that I, it's a reworking of the story of the Joan of, of, Joan of Arc, um, but that's not a fair description. That's not a fair description <laughs> at all. It's, it is, among that genre, it's the most, one of the most lyrical and just stunningly creative books in that genre that I've ever read. I picked up Station Eleven uh, mm. a few, a couple of years back, and it blew me away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I didn't pick it up because I, I thought, oh, dystopia, cool. I picked it up because part of it was set in Toronto, which is my hometown. <laughs> and so I thought, yeah, it was, because it was only afterwards that I realized yeah. what an amazing book it is. If but yeah. you have any non-dystopian book recommendations, I mean, readers are readers. <laughs> oh sure. my god, the best book I've read in a very long time. Um, there are two books that completely destroyed me this year. Wow. Um, one is What Belongs to You by Garth Greenwell, yeah. which is one of the most amazing, honest love stories. Um, and, and honest in a way that, that only really good love stories are. Um, that book just just ruined me. Um, and then the other one is called No Knives in the Kitchens of the City. It's by a guy named uh, Khaled Khalifa, a Syrian writer. Mm -hmm. uh, the English translation came out last year, the year okay. before, something like that. Mm -hmm. And it's this sprawling epic of a family in Aleppo. It takes place over 40 years, uh, from the 60s to about a decade ago. And it's part Dostoevsky, part Orwell, and difficult. Uh, and and tragic and just one of the best books I've read in the last decade. Well, that sounds like some solid recommendations to be going away with. Well, thank you so much for sitting and having a chat with me. And it's so interesting to talk to you in person and ask you all these questions about what I think is a pretty great book. <laughs> thank you, it was a pleasure. But that's all for now. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the dystopian, post-apocalyptic, speculative future genre in the comments down below. In the meantime, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all again soon.